Hello and welcome to another Healthy Bite. My name is Dr. Ron Ehrlich. Now, before I start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I am recording this podcast, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Now, this week we explored why we get sick, and if you haven't had a chance to listen to it, I would strongly recommend that you go and have a listen to the episode I have just done with um, Sarah Myhill. Dr. Sarah Myhill is a a medical practitioner. She's uh, based in Wales in the UK. I first uh, was introduced to her through my association with the Australasian College of Nutritional and Environmental Medicine. Last year, we, at the beginning of the pandemic, held a global online conference, uh, which attracted over 800 people, uh, had over 70 speakers from all around the world and uh, participants from 22 different countries. And the theme was environmental and viral disruptors, rising to the challenge, reducing the risk and future-proofing humanity. And you will also notice that uh, if you're a regular listener of the podcast, that we are always trying to focus on issues around immune function, boosting immune function. And, um, and, and I refer back to some of the wonderful discussions I've had with um, some practitioners that I have had the honour of sharing uh, uh, an editorial board position with uh, for um, uh, an, an international news service called the Orthomolecular News Service, which I would also recommend to you as a wonderful resource. And I have invited several guests on from there, Dr. Richard Cheng, Dr. Thomas Levy, Dr. Andrew Saul, Dr. Carolyn Dean, Professor Michael Gonzalez, Professor Ian Brighthope, who also happens to be the founding president of the Australasian College of Nutritional and Environmental Medicine. Boy, is that all ever a mouthful. But the point about it is that they were all focused on improving immune function. And I think it's one of the challenges always, really, Um, but uh, in particular in these last uh, year or two, to boost immune function. And so this week's episode was really getting down to a very fundamental level called uh, why we get sick and why how to maintain good health now it's uh it's in, i you if you're also if you're regular <laughs> listen to this podcast you'll know I, I love drawing connections with different people that i speak to and and i'll mention this other conversation i had recently with a professor of psychology uh, Julia Rucklidge. Uh, now, Julia Rucklidge said to me when we were talking about how the science of medicine is practiced, how modern medicine is practiced, she said, look, uh, you know, for medical practitioners, for health practitioners, there needs to be a balance. We need to explore, uh, we need to be both sceptical, but we also need to be curious. And when I thought about that, I thought, yeah, curious. Um, when does that curiosity kick in for many medical practitioners? And and I came to realise that um, depending on when you thought you were really starting to study your profession, that's when you really took it seriously. And for many doctors, many dentists as well, it wasn't until we got into studying disease and how to manage it that we thought we were really being doctors or dentists. So in third, now the medical degree varies uh, anywhere from four to six years, but uh, let's say there is a five-year degree and the first, uh, from about third year in an in a undergraduate degree, you start to study pathology and you also study how to fix those diseases. Are those diseases inflammatory? Are they an infection? Are they a cancer? They are the three basic questions one asks oneself in pathology. And according to those answers, then you look for solutions as to how best to manage it. And you'll notice I'm using the word manage because that is really something that I think is a problem with our healthcare system. And that is, it's not really a healthcare system. It's a chronic disease system management system. And it has become that way because so many in the profession, and it's supported in all the journals, in all the professional organisations, 
in all the regulatory bodies, it is that that is supported. Find out what the disease is, study pathology, and then work out how to manage it. Uh, in dentistry, that's all about how to repair broken down teeth or how to reverse diseases. But essentially, in medicine, it's about how to um, deal with chronic disease. And often, the solution is either pharmacological, surgical, or, or another intervention by another specialist practitioner. But here's the thing. When we all studied, when we all did our degrees that gave us our qualifications, we all studied basic sciences about how the human body works. And that was the study of anatomy, physiology, how the body actually, how all its different systems work together. How does the digestive system work with the respiratory system? What effect does that have on the immune system? Uh, and, and so on. So it was all, physiology is all about the study of how the body works together. And then we also studied histology, which was the study of a, a cell or the different types of cells that there were throughout the body. You know, the nucleus within the cell, all the different organelles within the cell. They are things like mitochondria, which produce energy, ribosomes, which produce proteins. You will understand the significance of that because so many of the vaccines now are using this novel technology of putting mRNA or DNA. DNA is the double helix. mRNA is the single helix. So if you unravel a DNA molecule, you will end up with the RNA molecule. And you put that into a human cell and that human cell, cell starts to produce proteins which the body mounts an immune response to. So they are ribosomes. You have a whole lot of other organelles. I won't bore you with all the details there, but, but there, are, there is a whole science about the study of cells. And then if you want to work out how processes occur, then you have to study biochemistry because every single cell in your body from the moment of conception to the moment you die is going through trillions of biochemical processes to keep the physiology of your body working optimally. And when that doesn't work, you get sick. And sick means you end up with what are now referred to as chronic degenerative diseases. In fact, there's another word that's put in front of that. Preventable chronic degenerative diseases like heart disease, cancer, autoimmune conditions, diabetes. And these are significant problems. Just to put that in perspective, if you are a regular listener, you will have heard me say that in heart disease, we've become so familiar with daily death rates and how many deaths have occurred in a pandemic, etc. I think the number's up to six, five or six million. But here's the thing. Every single day, year on year, there are 50,000 deaths globally from cardiovascular disease. About 18 million people a year die from this preventable chronic degenerative disease. Cancer, the second biggest killer kills around 10 or 11 million people a year, which equates to 27,000 people a day die of cancer. Diabetes, about, I think the number is something like four and a half million people die from type diabetes, typically the preventable type two diabetes, insulin resistance diabetes. It used to be called late onset diabetes, but now children are suffering from type 2 diabetes, four and a half million people a year die from diabetes. That equates to about 10,000 people a day dying globally. So you can see these issues of disease are significant. Autoimmune conditions, it's now up to 100 different autoimmune conditions. That's the body attacking itself. And depending on your genetic predisposition, when the body attacks itself, it may manifest itself like a neurological condition, like Parkinson's or multiple sclerosis. Your genes may predispose you to a, a, a digestive problems, 
like celiac disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease. Your, your genes may predispose you to your joints being the weak link, in which case you'll end up with rheumatoid arthritis. Your weak link may be thyroid, so you may end up with underactive or overactive thyroid. And we talk about that in this week's episode with Sarah Myhill. But these, what I'm, the point I'm making is that these are all diseases which are said to be chronic, preventable chronic degenerative diseases. How do we get sick? Well, if we bothered as a profession, professions, to go back and not start our curiosity about how to improve ourselves professionally by studying diseases and the pharmacological and interventions which go with managing the disease, but if we cast our minds back maybe to the beginning of our degrees where we studied anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, histology, microbiology, the study of microbes, that was always all about those pathogenic or disease-causing bacteria. But we know now that the vast majority of bacteria are so critically important to our health. And that's true whether we're talking about the oral microbiome, the gut microbiome, the microbiome on our skin, and actually, interestingly, the microbiome in the soils. They all have a lot in common. The more diverse, the more resilient, the more resilient, the healthier you will be. It's when we get an imbalance. And that's true of how, what goes on in each and every cell. So my point is, why do we get sick? And should we not, as a profession, be curious about all that causes disease and work out perhaps why people get sick? And then we'll have a better chance of actually making them well rather than just managing chronic disease, which comes with all sorts of problems. When you start giving, taking a reductionist view of disease, for example, you might go to the doctor and you might have an inflammation. Well, rather than explore on a cellular level why you have an inflammation, you might be given an anti-inflammatory. Well, the anti-inflammatory may have an effect on your gut and uh, your stomach, and you may start to get reflux or heartburn or indigestion. So you go back to the doctor and they give you another prescription for antacid or a protein pump in, in, uh, inhibitor, PPI. Um, some of the biggest drugs sellers like Nexium uh, are, um, are protein pump inhibitors. The problem with that is by reducing the acid in your stomach, it's acidic for a reason, to kill bacteria as you ingest them with your food, but also to help you break down um, your proteins and your nutrients. So when you are on protein pump inhibitors for a long period of time, which you were on because you were on an anti-inflammatory, which caused you reflux, heartburn and indigestion, now you are also predisposed to osteoporosis or you're more prone to infections, which could be giving, mean you get either for the infections, antibiotics, which in turn affects the gut microbiome. And so we go on with each drug, another problem arises. Whereas if we took a step back to first or second year undergraduate studies and bothered to explore why we get sick, then we would be delivering a much better healthcare system. And that's why this podcast is here for you to explore things about why you might get sick. And Sarah says in this podcast, she says one thing she always recommends is for people to go back to nature. And we've said this many times before on this podcast. As the world we live in becomes more complex, the solutions, I believe, are remarkably simple. And that means going back to basics. Anyway, I would recommend you listen to the podcast uh, this week with Sarah Myhill, Why We Get Sick and How to Stay Healthy. I hope this finds you well. Until next time, this is Dr. Ron Ehrlich. Be well. This podcast provides general information and discussion about medicine, health, and related subjects. 
content is not intended and should not be construed as medical advice or as a substitute for care by a qualified medical practitioner. If you or any other person has a medical concern, he or she should consult with an appropriately qualified medical practitioner. Guests who speak in this podcast express their own opinions, experiences and conclusions.